why don't we d- dive a little bit deeper into kind of quest tech? What so you, you mentioned there's computational modeling, um, and you do some research programs. Like what? What's the business? Or I guess what's like is you guys do contract research, or like companies come to you and say, "Hey, we need an alloy that does this. Can you make it for us?" Like what? How does? What was like the early concept of what you guys were working on, and maybe how has that matured? What do you guys kind of do mostly, mostly today? Yeah, that's a great question because we've certainly undergone an evolution uh, over the 25 years. Um, We were basically founded on this premise of being able to design new materials, achieving targeted properties that are defined by the the client. Um, And we've gotten, you know, still predominant um, revenue source for us percentage wise is government funding. Um, So we go after a lot of government funding and they tend to fund or fund really high risk research like hey could you design uh an iobm alloy for next gen turbine blades that could you know achieve these properties and we'll work with an oem and and uh and and work on a program program like that but it's it's really high risk um but it would be high reward if you're successful um so we get hired mostly by the government you know a lot of programs for alloy design um a lot of it is model development you know how do you really develop robust models that that are accurate uh to reality um and uh with we we do work on a a growing number of programs directly for industry and i'd say a lesser percentage of those is pure alloy design because it is so high risk and and uh, uh and time consuming even with computational methods um but a lot of that is kind of looking at their current state Um, what material are they using and maybe they want to maintain all of their properties but just increase one like toughness or strength or corrosion resistance and how do you tweak the composition how do you tweak the the heat treatment to to do that um i'd say the biggest shift for us um we're we're um uh, have always been a services provider go after government funding work with industry and, and try to um uh, get programs funded by inter- industry for the problems. But we've been uh, the last 18 months or so really focused on developing a software that will allow uh, industry or government um, clients to subscribe to our software and do all this modeling and design themselves in house. Um, we just released ICMD in July, so it's about a month old. Uh, and it And it builds upon 25 years of programs um, where we've we've been able to, to calibrate and fine tune mod, fine tune models, build our own databases of properties of the elements, uh, and integrate everything in a very user friendly way. It's it's called ICMD, uh, launched launched in July, and and we're seeing a lot of interest in it from alloy producers uh, and OEMs as well as the government, uh, and I think in some you know, definitely in some of our programs, there's a sensitivity uh, for the client to share with us what they're working on or like details of what they've tried in the past that worked or didn't work. And with the software, it'll be a black box to us. We won't we won't know, you know, the whatever models they run, whatever calculations they make will be on their side and we won't know at all what they're working on. Um, so we think it should open up some doors too with folks, uh, um, to, to do all, all this, uh, uh, modeling themselves. And so, I mean, from a U.S. perspective, how many of the, um, can you maybe talk a little bit about like the actual making of the material? So you guys create a recipe that has a target use case, target properties. Then what's the next step? Do you have to go to a carpenter or whoever whoever it may be to say like hey can you make us this like how how does that work or do you guys get much into that space to like prove it out yeah we uh and we brought a few materials to market from basically trl zero technology readiness level zero from concept to kind of proof out at lab scale and then commercialization and and uh, flight. We have a, a suite of ferrium steels that are licensed to Carpenter Technology, um, and they're flying on on uh, a number of landing gear components, space components, uh, high performance racing Formula One. Um, 
but uh, we we have in-house capability to make kind of quarter sized uh, prototype material, like if you stack three quarters on top of each other. So uh, we work across all material systems, aluminum, titanium, uh, cobalt, copper, nickel, steel, refractory alloys like niobium and moly and tungsten. Um, and so we could come up with the designs. We can make the prototype material in house. We have a full mat lab here, and then we're right, we're a mile away from Northwestern. I'm pointing that way because it's over my shoulder. Uh, I could walk there in about 10 minutes. Uh, their material science uh, and engineering lab um, and all their characterization resources. Um, so we can make prototype material in house, kind of heat treat it, test it, um, and understand. Did, did, does the microstructure look like uh, we are targeting with the composition and, and thermal processing? When we when we design a material, it's never like, hey, we design it in the computer. We're ready to make components and fly it. Now there's a kind of an iteration of making material, testing it, calibrating the models to make them more accurate, and then maybe doing a redesign. Um, but any of those material systems that I mentioned, the next step would be a 50 pound heat or a 500 pound heat um, and to really scale it up, you know, 10 tons or more. And over the years, we've just developed relationships with the supply chain. So we, we know where to go, you know, who, who can cast us, you know, a um, hundred pound ingot of a custom titanium alloy or aluminum, um, you know, or in the case of uh, additive, you know, who, who's, who's willing to do, small powder runs of custom compositions um and and it varies uh depending on what alloy it is i mean you know carpenter will do or praxair you know would do uh nickel and steel predominantly but who do you go to for aluminum or for niobium or tungsten it's kind of all all different folks and it's uh it's a challenge but but we certainly have relationships to to get that done be sure to check out our website, www.3degreescompany.com, for more content.